Well, welcome. <laughs> I'm Andrew, uh, and I'm one of the three co-producers of uh, Soundwalk September. And um, uh, Hert, who's not in the image, is one of us, and Babak is the third. So what we'll do is we'll skim through all these lovely slides we presented, um, and um, uh, hopefully um, you'll come up and ask some questions while we keep going. Uh, great, here's Tony. Hello, Tony. Hi. Uh, Hi. You've missed, you've missed nothing and there aren't a lot of us, so you're in good shape, Tony, so well done. Um, I just started by saying that I was, I'm one of the three co-producers of Soundwalk September. Uh, my name's Andrew Stuck and I'm based in London. And uh, my colleague's Het uh, is on the call. Uh, he's based in, in Belgium, in Bruges, and Babak, who is uh, in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, Tony, where are you? Uh, from Dorchester and Dorset. Ah, oh, brilliant. Lovely part of the world. Oh, good. And Karen, is that Karen? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. It is Karen. Good. Hello, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Oh, headphones on. All right, we're, we're, we'll, we'll start going through the slides. Okay, so Soundwalk September, it runs during September. It's uh, sort of written on the can. It did begin originally as Soundwalk Sunday, um, but uh, after a first couple of outings, uh, we discovered so many more people wanted to get involved just on one Sunday, they wanted to uh, spread it across the month. So we've um, we've evolved into a, a month-long celebration of sound walks and um, listening walks and audio. And uh, guess what? It takes place in September. Um, what, what are kind of aspirations for sound walk uh, September? Um, we wanted to um, encourage and facilitate and promote and publicize the work of creatives from anywhere in the world who've made work uh, during the year. And we want to, uh, you know, um, uh, make it as inclusive as possible um, and help to uh, put people in touch, other creatives in touch with uh, other people who are making similar work um, and to um, encourage um, the use of um, technologies, digital technologies, um, to sort of break down boundaries and to uh, make it affordable for as many people as possible. So that's the kind of, those are our kind of aspirations. And uh, just to give you an idea of what happened last September. Now, last September, you've got to remember, we were uh, practically the whole world was under lockdown. Um, and many places in the world have been under um, quite strict restrictions throughout the, uh, the year. And yet we still managed to get um, 70 walking pieces um, submitted uh, for Soundwalk September, which went into uh, an award system that we've set up. And uh, uh, there are also 50 events running uh, in September. These were, um, the majority of these were uh, online. Um, we, we initiated a dozen of them, uh, but uh, there are a, a lot more that were initiated by other people. And in some areas, some were on the ground. So, um, you know, there were groups of people coming together to do listening or sound walks together. And um, we have a platform on which we host Sound Walk September, which is called Walk, Listen, Create, which you've uh, come to to uh, uh, listen to this presentation. Uh, and get involved, um, and um, uh, we issued tickets through um, Walk, Listen, Create uh, for the events that we hosted. And um, uh, we, we took advice, when, we, when the three of us sort of came together, uh, we, we took advice from people about how we could um, create a global collaboration uh, which promoted an, um, sound art and walking art and sound walks. Um, and the advice that we received was that we should try to recruit a, uh, an advisory board uh, from a, 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 as wide a diverse group as possible uh, with experience and expertise that they could lend us 
Um, and so that's what we've done. And we've had one year of an advisory board and we've, we've just recruited and uh, replaced a couple of advisors and have some other advisors. And you can find out about who those advisors are. But they're basically uh, people who've uh, been um, not dipping their toes into this uh, area of work, uh, but they're fully immersed and um, have been involved in lots of different ways. Um, during Sandwalk September, uh, Babak created a couple of rather uh, crafty interactive um, uh, uh, projects. One was called um, Shorelines, where, in which uh, we simply invited people to uh, write um, a, a piece of uh, writing about a shoreline. And then we invited them to share that with other people who might then read it aloud. Um, and um, that, that was the shoreline's idea. And uh, the second one was called 30 Days of Walking. And this was uh, where we wanted to try to um, encourage people to record a walk that they could make at any time and add it to a sort of rolling um, uh, long period of slow radio, if you like. Um, so we actually had uh, contributions coming in from all over the world. Uh, and some people were terribly disciplined and actually walked every day and sent us a recording. So uh, it was uh, pretty extraordinary. And the awards themselves, what happens there is they, um, uh, the advisory board act as our, the awards jury and judges. Um, and um, there were 13 shortlisted pieces, two winners and, and two honourable mentions and, and a special mention to someone who uh, uh, did in fact uh, produce a, a recording of their walk every day during the month of September. Um, okay, so where are we now? Um, we, we've got over 1,100 creatives registered on the site. Um, so we're, we're possibly, um, you know, it's a bit of a bold statement, the dominant platform, but we are probably uh, in, in amongst the, uh, um, the, the heavyweights now in terms of the number of creatives who are um, uh, sharing their work, um, uh, posting work on the site and coming to uh, cafes that we run, et cetera. Um, so how do we do all this? We do it completely uh, voluntarily. We're kind of bootstrapping everything at the moment. Um, we charge a very modest fee for events that we run, uh, cafes that we run fortnightly throughout the year, which are really opportunities for people who are part of the community to share their work and to provoke discussion. And um, we've, um, we're just going through a bureaucratic hell at the moment uh, in uh, registering as a not-for-profit uh, within the EU in Belgium. Uh, if you've heard stories about the bureaucracy in Belgium, you, you've got to believe it. Um, and uh, we are just about there. <laughs> We've had to sign um, our name several times on lots of different bits of paper uh, and post them from Brazil to Britain to, uh, to Belgium. Um, but it, we're, we're almost there. And um, from that, what we'll hope to be able to do is then start applying for grants and funding from elsewhere. But at the moment, it's very modest amounts of money that we're bringing in. Um, and we're not really in a position to commission work, I'm afraid, or support people financially. But what we would hope is that in the future, that might be the case. Um, well, you know, we, we want the community to grow and we want the community to uh, participate as much as possible. If there are opportunities where people can collaborate on making sound walks um, or running events together, then we'd love to be able to promote that and encourage that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, who knows what's going to happen this September. We, we don't know whether we're all going to have to be back online again, whether there will be an opportunity somewhere for on the ground events. Um, but, you know, the great news about sound walks especially those that are sort of delivered over the internet, uh, is that we uh, increasingly find that people are uh, listening to them and walking them because it's very much a kind of, it can be an individual experience or a, a shared experience in a small group. Um, 
I've, I've sort of mentioned this <laughs> operational budget. I'm not sure what our operational budget is, um, um, but yeah, we, you know, our budget at the moment is tiny. Um, when we run our cafe event every fortnight, we get about 30 people paying three euros, um, and then we reward the guest who comes along uh, by uh, letting them buy a book, which we then send them, um, or uh, we offer them a membership um, uh, to uh, the um, walk, listen, create community, and, and and that's part of what we're planning to do in the future is is um, sell memberships uh, as another way of a kind of crowdfunding, citizen sourcing, or whatever. Um, and uh, obviously, because we haven't got money to spend, we have limited marketing possibilities. But the advantage, of course, is the larger your network, the more numbers of people you can reach. So. Uh, we do have quite a, quite a few successes, and recently we had a piece in the Guardian in uh, in the UK, uh, which uh, has brought a lot of interest to Soundwalks. Um, there was something in the Independent and in the Eye, and it's surprising how um, you, you know you can start to uh, to get things into mainstream media uh, because more and more people are out walking around, listening on headphones. Um, downloading stuff and trying out soundwalk, so that's terrific. Okay, we've mentioned COVID. I'm, I'm not going to go there again. <laughs> uh, and of course, the other thing is, how do we stay relevant and original? We, uh, uh, you know, we we really want to try to start making new work and encouraging people to make new work, uh, making new work together. So, um, okay, so how how can you participate in in Soundwalk September, because that's what we hope you're going to do. Um, uh, I'm obviously during September and any time of the year, you can consume, you can uh, try out the walking pieces. They're all listed on our archive. And you can, if you've made work uh, in the past uh, and it's still available, uh, you can um, uh, list it on the website on Walk, List, and Create. And anything that you've made since the 30th of September last year. Um, is eligible for Soundwalk September Award, so uh, you can add that work. And um, obviously, what we'd encourage you to do is try out work uh, uh, as and when it's possible. And clearly, you can attend an event when they take place. Um, but what we're hoping is we might start to consider hosting an event uh, or submitting a piece. Um, or even boldly becoming a partner in Soundwalk September, which uh, um, it's not too onerous, but uh, w would require a, um, a, a greater level of collaboration with us in some way or other. Um, so th this is sort of, I hate to say it, this is a, a you know easy easy things to uh, tips to think about when hosting events. So I won't spend too much time on it. Um, most of us who've um, been around on Zoom or its equipment for the last 12 months uh, know f only too well about the th trips that you can trip into, the pitfalls that you can make, um, and also how on earth uh, you get to publicize and promote uh, what you're doing, which might be an example of this uh, this event this evening. But anyway, we shall see. Um, and um, the, the kind of risks uh, that what may happen or may not happen. So. What's happening tonight is we haven't got a large number of people here, but we are going to we are recording the event. We'll make it available as a video. Um, the presentation slides will be available through the uh, um, FAQs we have on the site. Um, and any questions you have that we don't answer, uh, we'll include in the FAQs as well. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, if you're running an event, you've got to think about what to do if uh, the uh, kit fails, uh, you know, you know what, what things can you do? Um, I was involved in the Urban Tree Festival last year. We had 370 people who'd uh, paid a huge amount of money. I don't think they paid much, but I think they paid about eight quid each uh, to come to an event that we ran on Zoom and the whole thing fell over, uh, which is a bit of a disaster. But what we managed to do was we managed to get them plus another 120 people into a rerun of the event that we ran a week later. So it, it just shows you it can happen, uh, you know, and disaster can fall, but then amazingly you can sometimes uh, grasp something out of it. But uh, the most important thing is don't try too much, you know, to set your expectations a bit lower and not to worry about it. 
Um, okay, so a question that people often ask is, what is a sound walk? And obviously, uh, we, we've sort of kind of done a definition, but you know, from the from the most simplest end, it's listening. Uh, you know, listening to the world. No, don't need to have headphones or anything. It's just listening to your surroundings or listening to uh, the human voice uh, or the noise that humans make or the other bits of nature or environmental sounds or um, uh, putting things into the into the space um, uh, that uh, augment it with sound. And often that's done technologically nowadays uh, through the internet and digital downloads. Um, so we go from the, the very simple thing, which might be a listening walk, um, uh, where, where there's uh, very little uh, digital technology, to something which is much more sophisticated and right at the far end, where we have sort of uh, mixed media, mixed um, uh, augmented reality, uh, virtual reality, uh, located media, um, 3D audio, uh, uh, you know, all, all sorts of uh, whatever the terminology is at the moment. Um, that's available there. And what we have on the site is we've got a fairly uh, comprehensive list of uh, frequently asked questions and the responses. Um, uh, to, so if you want to kind of explore uh, what other people have done, uh, we've got a huge archive. Uh, we've got a bunch of DIY toolkits that you can uh, uh, use to look up. Um, uh, during Soundwalk September, we ran a couple of workshops about how to make Soundwalks, um, uh, how to um, edit audio, how to uh, uh, locate, geolocate uh, material and things like that. And um, those were recorded and, and we've got those also on the site. So there's quite a lot of um, uh, material that we can provide, but there's obviously other sources on the internet. Um, and um, the key thing is um, have a go um, uh, and submit a piece and see what happens. Um, and who knows, with um, any luck, you might get on the short list uh, and you might pick up an award. These things happen. Um, and then just briefly, you know, if, if you're in a position you want to become a partner uh, involved, um, we, we, we have a, a we're uh, about immediately we become um, a registered not-for-profit, which, as I say, we're going through bureaucratic hell, but immediately we are, we're going to start um, uh, promoting our, our membership scheme in which uh, individuals can become a member and institutions become a member. So if you're part of an institution, um, then, um, you, you know, if there's a way in which uh, we can negotiate something with uh, um, an institution receiving 25 or 50 memberships for their students or whatever it might be, uh, then obviously we we do that. Um, we're always on the lookout for people who might support a cafe. We, as I say, we run them every fortnight. Um, uh, and we do a kind of sponsorship scheme. Um, we do a curated weekly mailing. We've only just started this. And uh, our mailing um, uh, it has already risen. We've, I think, we've done five, uh, maybe four or five curated um, newsletters, and we've already uh, signed up over 360 people to subscribe to it. Um, and um, uh, yeah, uh, there's there's a, a more on the website about where you can find about how you could support us further. So. Um, yeah, it's now a time for you to ask questions of us. Um, as I say, I'll probably shut up and let uh, Hert and Babak do most of the answers. Um, anything that we, we we don't get to, but I'm sure with uh, uh, we're, there's only a small handful of us here, so I'm sure we'll be able to cover uh, all of them. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, the presentation slides will be added to the FAQ. Uh, we'll we'll um, edit the video and make sure the video. Um, is, is available, and um, we just love you to uh, start creating sound walks for uh, sound walk September this year. So thanks very much, and field some questions. Either um, pop them in the chat or uh, shout them out. Um, yeah, I got a question, Bob. Go for it. You're right. Um, as you know, I'm doing. I, I'm I'm coordinating or whatever it's called uh, a session in May. And um, I'm wondering, uh, can I sort of establish a relationship between that and the submission for the September walk, i.e., um, 
I because I don't know what I, I know as much as or, you know a plan for the the session itself. And we've talked, we've discussed it, so we've got a, a a rudimentary skeleton of an idea around which you know go anywhere. Now I see that as evolving over was it between May, June, July, August, about four, three or four months. That idea could evolve or develop. So if I present an idea for um, September out of that, i.e. its evolution, what it's become, is that is that on the cards? Is that you know is that a or would you need something sort of from a, a certain time pretty clearly expressed? Then I'd have to stick to that sort of thing, or could it be a, a, a sort of a an evolutionary thing? Here, here to Babak, do you want to answer? That? Yeah, sure. Uh, now, Rob, uh, you're an artist, eh? so it's totally your work. Um, so it's really totally up to you. Uh, okay. I suppose the only thing that we uh, uh, ask is uh, uh, something to be able to refer back to. Right? Uh, what you see uh, in the listing of uh, pieces of works on our site, they're not, the works themselves are not on our site, right? They refer to somewhere else, whether maybe an application or a platform or documentation of um, something that happened in the field or whatever. So, um, so I suppose the only thing that we're asking for is that uh, uh, there is a, a description of the work uh, that you uh, that you have. Um, and, and what that is, is, is totally up to you, right? Uh, and what the work is, is totally up to you. Um, is there a, a cut point? That it has to be submitted, you know. I mean, is it? Do you want to? No, not really. Well, there it, it depends yeah. a little bit on what you're submitting, right? If you're uh, submitting, like many people are, uh, if you're submitting a piece that can be consumed by others, like an experience, uh, like you download something or you uh, copy something or you print something out from the web, um, uh, then, then well, there's still not really a cutoff. But what we say is that if you submit whatever you have before August one. That's when oh, okay. that's sort of like our cutoff for being able to include your work in our communications, like when okay. we uh, uh, send out press releases and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's yeah, it's it's your work, right? So if it evolves after August one, uh, then it's totally up to you. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yes. If I can add to that, um, as work listen create, which is like the structure in which the Soundtrack September is, is uh, presented and organized, um, is uh, concentrating on, on the relation between audio and walking and walking and audio um, in, in its separate creative uh, forms. Uh, Soundtrack September is focusing more on, on the um, walking with sound or sound walking on itself or listening walking um, as a unity. And um, it's a celebration in the first uh, place, uh, hoping to, to get people getting to know more about sound walking, to make maybe their first sound walk, or giving a platform to all people that are creating sound walks in this month. This doesn't have to be by having a work on that month only, uh, or specifically, but um, the map or archive that, that Babak referred to is a part of that. Uh, we are archiving year um, by year uh, the walks and sound walks that are created in a specific year, but also respectively that were made um, throughout the last uh, decades. And, uh, and this map is as well a sort of um, the menu um, of, of what is happening throughout the year and, and that is highlighted in this month. So um, everybody is invited uh, to participate um, during that month, but it doesn't have to be specifically with a work in that month. Although, the, as Andrew said, you're very much invited to organize an event, uh, which can be a gathering, a walk, uh, can be small, can be big. Um, that um, invites people to listen and to walk at the same time. I got one more question. Can I ask it? It's, it's a very esoteric one, though. Uh, apologies in advance, but may I, is it okay? Because there's a bit of time. It's okay. All right. My interest in specifically, and which is what I've been working on for the last 50 years, one of the aspects has been um, the uh, the the uh, tantric or the uh, Vedic scriptures, which relate sound to uh, form. So, 
through, uh, you know, on an electron level, the Hindu belief is that sound atoms comprise form. So there's a direct link between sound and the visual. So it's not just sound and, and movement. There's a, uh, for me, there's a, a, a visual dimension in it. Because, you know, could, could, could it stretch to, to that? Because of that, because this is my sort of interest, basically. Is that too esoteric to ask? Or yeah, well, but but it's my opinion about that, or my perspective of it is uh, in my work as as a as a creative uh, practitioner, um, is that uh, listening is maybe the most sensory, um, um, most unified, uh, uh, or sound is the most unified sense, uh, bringing in the whole body, not only the ears. And, I agree. Uh, it's the most basic the, of all our senses. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. So not only the visual as well, the visual, of course, of course, because uh, the, the whole idea that, that, that everything is built out of waves. And um, there are much more, ex let's say, um, uh, expert people that can, expertise people that can talk about this topic. But um, the, um, uh, the whole idea that sound is only sound is, of course, and, and, and a limitation of what sound is that is not, uh, not, not real. And, um, and actually, to, 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 show, to show this, that it's broadened this perspective and this, this yeah. experience of right. sound, um, it's exactly what we do. So, um, uh, what you do seems to fit in very well. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got questions to ask? Or are you uh, satiated with what I've presented? <laughs> so, I just had a quick question about the 30 days of walking. Um, you mentioned, I think, at the beginning that that, that basically uh, this was a kind of uh, it could be a range of sounds, um, uh, sounds of the countryside, or it could be augmented with virtual reality, etc. Um, how how much of an individual's voice is allowed as part of that sort of um, um, work, or is it is it basically sounds, basically sounds rather than people talking? That is sound. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's totally up to you. Um, but maybe uh, for uh, context, um, 30 Days of Walking was uh, this one project that we facilitated last year for Soundwalk September. Um, so it's not yet a given that we'll do the same for this year. We might, but we might not. We're actually looking at uh, other things as well. Um, but if this would have been, asked, if you would have asked this question for last year, then it would have been totally up to you. Um, you can you can actually go back into uh, the archive for the submissions for 30 days of walking for last year. Um, and I remember, I don't know who it was, uh, but someone recorded a conversation between two people for like 45 minutes as they walked from uh, one of these uh, couples, people, one of their houses to, to town or something like this. Uh, okay. uh, so this was with all the ambient sounds, of course, included, but it was very much about the conversation that they were having. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, we are not the arbiters of what makes art, right? <laughs> you yeah. are the artist, so you decide what it is that uh, you want to convey. Um, yeah. And uh, if you find that, uh, in like last year for 30 days of walking, the vast majority of people recorded ambient sound and you're the only one who records uh, speech, well, yeah, then so be it, right? Uh, we are not setting those rules. Uh, we're only with that project, uh, at least, uh, facilitating people to participate in it in the way that they see fit. Uh, so, in in that ex for that example, it was it really was totally up to you. Okay, thank you. As well, it's not only about uh, about art. Uh, the uh, it, it's it, it's about all the fields that that are uh, using. And um, a sound in a more uh, creative or, 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 or um, a specific way to to uh, to deepen their their uh, their work, and um, and so um, you don't have to be an artist to make a sound work. Uh, it can be also journalists, can be filmmakers, can be philosophers, can be uh, thinkers, can be uh, uh, people that, that, that work with communities, uh, the, it's uh, so much more than just a very restricted artistic approach we try to um, address. Mm. Uh, Margaret, did you have a question to ask you? Uh... 
I've actually got tons of them, but I don't want to bore other people because you. Go on, go bore us. Well, you're working on a blank slate with me because I've never done this sort of thing before and I don't even have the right equipment. So in your facts um, sheet, are they for beginners? Because I probably don't even have the right equipment and wouldn't even know how to upload sound onto the computer. I mean, how basic are you starting this at? That's one question. Yeah, that's a fairly good question. Well, the, to assure you, you probably do have the right equipment because I'm going to guess you have a phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you've got something to get started with. Um, and yeah, of course, I mean, you can go into a, a high end audio shop and buy a very expensive microphone um, as well. Uh, and then you have better equipment. But, it, you know, again, it's totally up to you. Um, one tip that uh, was once told to me, which I uh, um, cottoned onto, is that uh, if you have a phone, Although the audio quality of many cell phone microphones is reasonably bad. Uh, if you happen to have uh, an iPhone, then you're probably on the good side of things. But one thing that you can do to reduce uh, uh, wind noise is to uh, put a sock, literally a sock, over your phone when recording. Um, but having said that, uh, uh, low end micro external microphones that you can connect to your phone already vastly improve the quality of um, uh, the recordings that you make with it, and in you know, a low end, can be uh, you know, ten or fifteen pounds, really. Um, so you you do have the equipment, or or if you don't have a microphone that you're happy with, it's very easy to uh, to very cheap also to start. Um, but it's but going back to your question, uh, yeah, we we don't have tutorial. Well, we don't have many tutorials to begin with, but we have a lot of pointers to tutorials. And it's quite possible that there are one or two that really are also suitable for very beginners, um, but otherwise they're also easily found. So if you're stuck, uh, you can always give us a shout and we can point you in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, if oh, I chip in and say that. Thank you very so much. That, uh, uh, Margaret, if, I, uh, if you look through the FAQs, you'll find that I, I, we did um, a sound walk workshop with um, for the University of Greenwich Sound and Image Festival in November, uh, and that's that's recorded. It's on YouTube, and it's also there's a link to it from the FAQs. Just to give you an idea, what we did was we uh, we asked people to um, uh, record something on their smartphone there and then. This was on a Zoom call, um, so we asked them to. Well, what we first did was we got people to write things in the chat. Uh, which were uh, rhyming words, and then we asked them to take some of the rhyming words that were in the chat and record it um, for less than a minute using their smartphone, us telling us telling them how they could do that. And then we uh, got them to actually listen back to that uh, and uh, delete it, because part of the thing about all this thing is you can learn very a lot from listening to your own work and decide, oh God, that was awful. But then you need to know how to delete it. So we taught people how to delete it. Then we showed um, how you can download Audacity um, software, which is a sound editing software, which is free. Uh, and we showed people how you could download it onto your uh, computer. We then uh, took extracts of um, uh, pieces of um, um, sound pieces and we showed people how they could edit it, uh, how you could fade it in and out, um, how you could duplicate it and loop it. We did all that uh, in the workshop. And then what we did was we used another app, um, which is called the Echoes app. Um, which uh, allows you to locate pieces. So uh, what that means is that you can take uh, the things that you've edited uh, or even the recordings you've made raw and rough from your smartphone and haven't edited and add it to pinpoint it onto bits of the landscape so that other people uh, at another time can come back and listen to what your recordings are. So all of that we did on a workshop which lasts 75 minutes. Now, I can't absolutely guarantee that by the end of watching that, you'll be, uh, um, uh, you, you know, you'll be the the wizard, but I, or the, uh, but I can assure you um, there's enough information and demonstration of what's going on that you can make um, 
a very satisfactory uh, sound walk. Oh, that would be so helpful, Andrew, for me, because I'm hugely dyslexic. And so to see it in this presented in a doing way, so to speak, would be so helpful. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, there's a link in the FAQ, so you'll find it there. Uh, thank you. So I, I, I can go to YouTube and I look under um, something immediately, couldn't I? Without you trying could be. To you go, go to, to the Walk Listen Great site FAQs and you would uh, find it there. I think it's in about the fifth FAQ. Thank you. Um, could I just also check that I've got, if I can put it like this, the theme of this in a way, because it is specific in a way in relation to, as I'm understanding it, connecting our humanness to the, in inverted commas, the nature around us. Is that right? Through sound. I mean, it's this open call is specific in some way that I haven't quite caught, I feel. I think it's quite general um, that, uh, that um, it's open for any approach you may have towards sound and uh, environment, environment in the sense of, of the living environment. Uh, the, and um, it doesn't in the, oh, doesn't even imply the use of technology, but um, the, could be also just about listening or, or walking in silence in a place uh, to perceive the, play, the, the the space in a different way. And um, uh, so uh, it's uh, very open as long as it's related with with an act of listening um, uh, uh, and uh, um, or sound. Uh, in movement with your body, then uh, it's um, applicable. Um, um, but sorry, have I got this right then? Bear with me. So um, there's a lot of walking going on actually, and it's walking inside where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can, be, it can be an indoor and outdoor walk. Okay. okay. And okay. it can be going from the indoors outdoors or the outdoors indoors. Oh, there's, good. That's what I was going to ask you. Um, and then the other thing is. Yeah, keep Sorry, going. Go and I was going to say, I've tried to write some poetry. Well, it's not poetry, really, but I got some good feedback on it. And I'm thinking about using that in some sort of way. But I want to use this as a multi-sensory approach to this. And um, so I've got to catch those multi-sensory sounds in some sort of way. So, oh, anyway, I know what the response to this is going to be. I'm the artist, so you get on with doing it. But I just wanted to say, I'm trying to bring the inside to the outside. Well, what, what you'll find also on the Walk, Listen, and Create site is um, a link, uh, more than one link, or probably half a dozen links, to uh, a huge number of copyright free sounds, which are provided by the British Library. Um, they're held, um, the British Library have obviously the one of the world's largest archives of sounds, um, both soundscape and oral history and voice, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and ma many of those um, are actually out of copyright and um, are, or have, have licenses which allow you to use them for free. And they've gathered those together, curated those together under different themes and provided links. And we have provided links from this website. And although we we don't, uh, although amongst the advisors we don't have anyone from the British Library, we are working very closely with the British Library uh, on on several uh, levels. Um, and um, and as I say, they're uh, they're they're digital um, curators and um, archivists are really helpful. And you can possibly pick up some tips as well from the British Library blogs. They have a sound and vision blog, which is available to the public, and that has huge amounts of tips and advice and, and things like that that you could uh, read if you so wish. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to I'm trying to spot is that Emma is that Emma who submitted a piece last year for Soundwalk September? <laughs> Is that you? It's very nice, very nice to meet you guys. Um, having you're, been you're the lady from Exeter. You're the lady I from Exeter. I am. Yeah, so you <laughs> could reassure Margaret that uh, your your piece was shortlisted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't even know I really anything about sound walks until last June when I um, 
sort of start made made one as part of a workshop for a family orchestra that I run um, as an activity for people to do together in lockdown. Um, and I enjoyed it so much that I decided to make two each month for a year. So I'm still in, still in, I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm a little bit behind, but I'm going to finish it. <laughs> so I'll have 24 in the end. And I, 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 did, I had no idea there was a context or any other practice um, going on for sound walks uh, of sound walking. I was absolutely thrilled to discover you guys, uh, um, which. Gave, made me feel I was I, there, were, there were sort of friends around, um, and I really enjoyed sort of learning about other people's. But I've been a little bit kind of cautious about looking into other people's practice too much because I'm having such a great time making my own journey um, into sound walking. Um, but I'm really grateful for the uh, really grateful for the encouragement and the support um, and the, the sort of um, yeah, being shortlisted was an amazing thing for me. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled. Um, so thank you. And I, I just encourage Margaret just to to go with your idea and 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 know that there there are people who will will receive it and be pleased to receive it and share it with each other. Do, do, Emma, do you want to give a little idea to Margaret you. what you did? I mean, you you, uh, you if yeah. I remember rightly, you you, you drew a um, hand. Correct me if I've got this wrong. A hand-drawn map of That's a right. route, of a route yeah. that people could follow and then listen to the sounds of various things they encountered on the route. Yeah, I'm, I, I do do a little bit of recording, but I'm no means an expert. And I was more interested in um, treating the, the the listening as a, a more than sufficient in itself. Uh, just at being attentive. Um, and perceiving and taking the time to notice what is in your habitat. And um, yes, yeah, so my, my, I don't have any technology, and I don't have any. I don't have any. I am a musician. I play the violin, but I'm. Um, I'm now the sound walks are. I draw them by hand and little illustrations, and I've never drawn anything in my life really. And I write descriptions of what I hear, um, and I've never really written much <laughs> either in my life. So it was all new, like a lot of people during lockdown, picking up, you know, trying new things, new ways of being, um, and, and in some connected with things I had already been doing, but using new and developing new skills. So yeah, it's just paper. And um, I made a very rudimentary website just because I needed a platform to share them on. And I just, I just met, there is single, each of my sound walks is a single sheet of a4, and I provide them as PDF so that anyone can just download it. I mean, it's completely in my own neighbourhood, so it's very, very local. Um, but it's what I could do. Uh, it sort of, it sort of grew its own legs as, as soon as I started. It started telling me what it needed to be. So, yes. So, Margaret, you, you don't need technology necessarily to 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 do to do sound walks. I mean, you don't even need to write it down. You just do it. I've started doing sound walks with other people and leading group walks since then, which is incredibly rewarding as well to share these experiences with people. And I that was learning as well. I really thought at first that sound walking was just for people to do on their own. Certainly, I like to do it on my own. But I actually found that people very much enjoy gathering as a group and making a journey together and talking together. I'm not very purist about it. I like we we have moments of of quiet and silent and we're listening and then we we talk together. About, and you never really know where the conversations are going to go. And people start to have memories triggered or have sounds that have particular meaning to them. So I'm, I I like to engage people in all those conversations. Specifically, how do I track your work? My work? Uh, um, no, you can, yeah, actually, it's you could. Listed, it's listed on Walk, Listen, Create. <laughs> yeah, but it's, there's a whole load of stuff there. <laughs> Just... oh, one of right, was right. shortlisted um, works on last year's Sound Walk September. So you can find my name there. And it's Exeter Sound Walks. Okay, thank you. Um, also, just very quickly, I wanted to ask um, Andrew this business about what did you say? Um, British Sound Library, whatever it is. What about the Natural History Museum? Sometimes I have children's workshops there and they deal with deep sound. 
Uh, yeah, I, I have to be honest, I'm not familiar with the Nat, uh, Natural History Museum uh, archives or um, um, uh, things, but I'm sure you, you might well be right. Yeah, you know, they, they, um, uh, th there is, um, there's a whole practice in listening and sound walks, which is called deep listening. I don't know whether that's what you're thinking of, um, but um, uh, yeah, I can well believe that Natural History Museum po possibly has an um, archive of sounds as well. I, I've no idea. The, the, the thing about the British Library um, it, it, that you kind of need to remember is that one time the Natural History Museum was part of the British Museum, as was the British Library. And um, the oral sound archive used to be on Exhibition Road, but has now been absorbed into the British Library. Um, and, um, you know, all of these big, massive institutions are very heavily linked. So you can probably find what you might be looking for on the Natural History Museum. You'll probably find it somewhere in the British Library and vice versa. But yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know that what you're, you're, you're mentioning specifically. And so something like Spotify, can we lift some music like that? Maybe that's a daft question. If, you know, like from bits of music, that has to be. Yeah, you can, you can find, if you, if you search YouTube, uh, you can find, uh, or you just Google license free music, then uh, you'll, for royalty free music, you'll find lots of um, bits of music that you can use. The, the 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 most important thing to think okay, about okay. is uh, not not to rip off someone else, um, uh, and be careful when you rip off um, recordings uh, of other things than music, because you know um, some people have even been taken to court over recordings of blackbirds because they have a unique song. But what what you um, what the other way to look at it is rather like what Emma suggested is she plays the violin, so I, you know. Um, she could record herself. So if you play a musical instrument, you could record yourself. Now, I was a member of the Colour Group, which uh, my friend was the president for three or four years. And it's uh, an amalgam of scientists and artists who come together regularly and make, make, present papers sort of thing. Um, you know, art is, you know, to do with the prism and all that sort of thing. But science, sometimes people working at the ICA, scientists working it's sort of industrially with colour and, and things like that. It would seem that there's a similar overlap potentially between science and art with colour, with sound, i.e. sound used as some sort of instrument. I mean, laser, there, there are all dimensions. Has the, uh, you know, has the, the remit of, uh, of, the, of, 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 the, of the sound cafe sort of broached, breached that, you know, the science um, art you know, not divide, but you know that it broadens the perspective enormously. Uh, I'm not. I'm really sort of the implications of it, but they seem to be, you know, exponentially gigantic. Do you, do you want to talk about that? I mean, you know, what what we I can just quickly chip in and say that one of our advisors is John Levac Drever. He's a professor of music. Uh, at Goldsmiths, um, but his sort of research enthusiasm has been for ages uh, industrial noise and making music with industrial sounds. Mm -hmm. So um, he, he might be worth um, googling John John Drever and uh, uh, checking out what he gets up to, or, or, or who who with whom he <laughs> with whom he uh, corresponds or collaborates with. But here you've been involved in a few science art initiatives. But, um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Maybe I missed it. That the connection did drop a bit. Are well, you talking about science and art, or uh, science and art? Not not so much what Andrew was saying. The the gentleman who was working with 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 mm -hmm. with, with sound as a, a potentially musical source. But I, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of um, sound as a, a scientific. Uh, exactly. A, a exactly. Source. Yes. 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 Uh, I uh, then understood well. Yeah, that's one of the, the approaches we have as well in the cafe. Uh, it's a very broad. Uh, um, that's a community uh, that we want to establish where everybody can talk about Hills and her uh, practice. Um, uh, the, and we have indeed invited people with a scientific background as well. 
Um, yes. But si science, in, 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 in this, not in the sense of a very specialized uh, um, uh, way, but more a holistic way. How can science, like just our approach to sound and walking, can uh, connect us uh, deeper um, uh, um, uh, with, with, with what is around us uh, in, 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 a, in a more unified way? Um, I think that is as well um, the, the, the strength of, of this whole platform, uh, Walk, Listen, Create and Sound Walk September, that it wants, wants to be holistic in a certain sense, not in a spiritual mm -hmm. sense, but in a, in a sense that it wants to bring people from very different backgrounds and knowledges together uh, over the, the 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 limits of their specialized uh, um, the expertise and, and, and knowledge. Uh, I, I see. I can see the art of sound. Many categories. I, hmm? I, I'm not quite aware of the, the, the categories that would fall within the science of sound, but it would certainly take some some interesting reflection. Um, I, 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 haven't, I haven't got a clue, actually, but I'm sure it's very fundamental. But I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Uh, and Bob, Bob, if you have a look at University of Newcastle, uh, they have a whole, um, I think you'll find they have a whole kind of research hub, which is based around what you're talking about. And we, okay. we had uh, uh, and, uh, quite a lot of people who are kind of involved in the, um, uh, the work of, you know, uh, acoustic building design and acoustic, yeah. you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. So um, we, we we did have a panel uh, during Soundwalk September. I can't remember now what the panel was called, um, which is shocking because I think I <laughs> I shared it. Uh, but um, but yeah, and there were people from Newcastle who contributed to that. Well, that would be that would fall under the category of engineering, you know, acoustics, and, and you know, in in, in 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 halls and things like that, and and so yeah, absolutely, yeah. I suppose I could just say, um, is the call going to be identical to last year, or are you putting any changes in? I'm back in here. Do you want to answer that? It's pretty much the same, right? Uh, we're asking for new work. Um, we, um, uh, with the, the advisory board, we've contemplated the idea of putting a particular flavor or uh, uh, frame around it. But um, it's already the thing is, it's already so niche that sound walking. Uh, I mean, that to then limit that again uh, seems <laughs> seems counterproductive to uh, to actually. Um, uncovering new work because that's also really one well with sound walks walk september specifically we're very much looking forward to new works being created but generally speaking with walk listen create we really want to be um uh the the library of uh, walking pieces um, uh accessible uh online so and then to set a a, a limiting uh, context on the creation or submission of pieces uh, seems a uh, counter to what we want to achieve if individuals want to uh, limit themselves uh, because in the limitation uh, is shown the master, uh, then uh, I'm all the more for it. Um, but to impose that restriction seems uh, unnecessary. Thanks. Yeah. At the end, we want to bring together the, a global community of people uh, that um, want to enjoy walking and sound uh, uh, in this month of September, and um, uh, not excluding anything, also with a very big interest we have in, let's say, the southern hemisphere, because this kind of practice is unfortunately often limited to the northern hemisphere, and um, so um, it's not only brought in a, in a, in a, or in a very general uh, or topic. That's why we want to be brought um, uh, in a. Uh, in the global perspective, uh, the, the, the embracing um, the many cultures and uh, nationalities um, in the bringing in their typical or the, their specific uh, approaches to sound and walking. Uh, so we, uh, at the contrary, we don't want to limit at all. We want to include as much as possible. Okay, so uh, let's draw it to close and say thanks to everyone and. Uh, Keep safe and well wherever you are, and um, we look forward to uh, finding out more about the pieces you create. Fabulous. Thank you so much.